J Rock. Look out for him. This boy right here got music in your product. I ain't got my wallet on me, man. J Rock. He has music. He's with a producer. He's with Warner Brothers. I don't listen to music. Talking about the ghetto. My mama tell me tread softly, gotta keep the fans off me, gotta keep the guns on me. I know the motherfuckers want me. No, I gotta hold it down. No, I gotta run my town. No, tomorrow's never promised. No, I gotta get it now. No, I got a job to finish. No, I need stock to grow. No, I need Lord's forgiveness. No, I've been through obstacles. No, I gotta shit on niggas. No, I gotta do my thing. I was on the block, right? Wasn't in my right mind. Just a young nigga hustling, trying to get mines. First off, man, you know what I'm saying? I was just looking through my phone, seeing Cool and Dre in there. So I hit them niggas up like, what's up, man? I need me a track, man. It was a banger, man. You know what I'm saying? So I put some verses on it and everything. Yeah, there was my gutter ways back in the gutter days. No education, but the gutter pays. I was like, man, I need more attention to this song. You know what I'm saying? So without doubt, man, I had to call one of the hottest niggas in the game. Yeah. Man, what's up, my nigga? I need you on this track. Oh, fucking DC, man. <laughs> Layovers and shit. I don't like planes. I never get used to planes. What the fuck we, what we doing in DC, nigga? What's up, man? So, you know, out here, man, for the my nigga Weezy, man. Uh, I think Lil Wayne just, he he's one of those guys that are bad on people coming up. This right here gonna be super big, man. I'm jumping on the song, whatever else. Be ready to look for us. Man, we so motherfucking turned up and excited. Wayne? We talking about Wayne back in motherfucking. What's this? 07, 08? This is monstrous, Wayne. Oh, yeah, we stalking that motherfucking tour bus. <laughs> we stalking it. You know, we driving city to city. We driving across the motherfucking world, and that's exactly what we did in order to get that little Wayne feature. Yeah, that was, okay. yeah, you know. If you hear some more hook, man, you can put your T Wayne on it. That's the verse. It's the ad lib. T Wayne. Put it like that. That's why I got guns in my gun back here. That moment in the studio with Wayne, me and J Rock in the studio with Wayne, and I never told Wayne this. That changed my perspective about work ethic. You got the verse in his hand, you see? I'm just not gonna rush it. I, don't, I respect it too hard. I'm not gonna rush it. I get up like I get high like priest get low. I so low like Chi Chin Cho. But we make more. But I say go, but I say blue, I say blue. Knocked out about 12 verses, and this is feature Wayne at the moment. And he's not no motherfucking fly by night verses. This is set right there and thought out, right in front of your face, and smashing him. And he's excited about it. And he's loving music, and he loves what he's doing. That gave me a whole nother appreciation. And we took that same intensity and that work ethic, and we applied it moving forward from having that feature for all my life. Follow me home, J-Rock right now in the studio with DJ Quick. It's going down. That's what's up. Sound Wiz, I know you don't talk much. What's up with the boy? I don't talk at all, so get the camera in my face, homie. Huh? <laughs> this song right here is for my people in the. J Rock represents people from the. The record was already taking off. People were feeling the record. It was, it was growing. We was getting the California love behind it. It was like somebody just cut the feet from right up under us right at that moment. No politics play a big role in it. Asylum merged with Warner. So the guys at Asylum took over the whole rap division and they stopped everything that was going on before then. Like without even talking or having a conversation, they just put the brakes on everything. You know, label politics to come in and shit get twisted and tangled, we didn't understand that back then. Because the music was there, the product is there. 
it's kind of like that thing if I come to your job and something's already great that's there and it blows up I don't get no credit for that so those guys were more inclined to put on people that they brought into the mix so that kind of stalled us right away after we did all this work these mixtapes this going around the clubs and doing these 30 people in the venue shows he worked really hard to get up to that point and everything we were doing as a company we all worked hard to get up to that point it was pretty much disheartening I'm talking about traveling all over the world, touring in minivans. I had a job at that point, I was missing work for four months and saying leave, taking family leave, and just trying to do as much as I can. So it was, I don't know, it was a weird time. It was a weird time for all of us, you know what I mean? We were all transitioning, but, and we didn't really know a lot about the game. You get so caught up in that world of trying to deliver what one person wants or what the label wants. And you're a kid, and you, 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 you trying to pop. This is what the label is telling you. But deep down in your heart, you know, J-Rock is about that struggle, that real music, that pain, you know, that lifestyle. I wouldn't say the confidence was crushed. It was more so angered by it, which drove the motivation to keep going. So we reached a point to where we needed to get out of that system. The actual day was when J-Rock was shooting the freshman cover for XXL. Me and Top went and met with the guys at Warner. So we went there, had a meeting and, you know, did what we had to do and got him off the label. We left with everything, too, even a van. <laughs> the J-Rock van, that's what we called it, because we had his picture and everything wrapped around it, doing promo, but we went on like two tours across the U.S. and that thing. Yeah, oh, the J-Rock van, yeah, that was a game LAX tour. I hope I can say this, I think Top just got Warner for that van. They provided that van. And he just left with that, like, we ain't giving this back. And we, we hopped in there and went all around the whole country and that. That was my first time hitting the road, too. That van is a, it's a part of the legacy. It's like, it's like a Kendrick Mama van. Jay Rock was always, he was, he's the biggest team player. Like, that's probably the best way to describe him. He's a team player. It was less about me, 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 me. It was more about all of us. If we, if we win as a team, we win together. That's why the first thing he said, look out for Kendrick, look out for Kendrick. He was screaming that for 13 years. My nigga about the bat. You know what I'm saying? When he was coming in the game, talking about his first shows ever, he didn't even want to hit the stage unless it was with Kendrick. He don't want to go nowhere unless it was with Kendrick. But everywhere you went, I'm in the meetings, I'm on the stage, I'm hype manning, fuck it, I'm on tour. You dig what I'm saying? I'm right there. And he put me in them positions to where people be like, okay, I fuck with you, Rock. Yeah, but I, I like this little nigga too. He ain't had to do that. Batman and Robin, you know? And that's why, I, to this day, I just appreciate my bro. It's like Starsky and Hutch, you know what I'm saying? I, got, I know this man got my back. That's why when you hear them two on the track, it sounds unlike any other two artists you'll ever hear on the track. With Kendrick, it was easier because we got to see the uh, do's and don'ts by going through everything with J-Rock. We recognized that we got to do it ourselves. that we got to go direct to the fans. And then after we get our buzz going that way, then we can come back with the label. In time in that process of uh, learning, sitting back and watching, I said, okay, we're going to learn from our mistakes and we're going to elevate that shit. J-Rock was the, he was the first cowboy over the hill. You know what I mean, he come back with a bunch of arrows in his back. You know what I mean? But that's the, you know, that's the growing pains. You got to experience it in order to know how to move forward. Yeah, a lot of people think Kendrick just came out and was the first artist, but no, Rock was the first. We learned how to run the business through Rock. 
You know what I'm saying? We learned deal structure. We learned what was publishing. We learned what was masters. Just what he's been through kind of influenced the whole camp. It's like it showed us what not to do moving forward. Rock went out there and took all the punches. He went out there and, you know, and, and fell a few times and did all that, but we needed to have that to be able to build what we have today. You feel me? Trial and error. We all went back in the studio and we had started recording heavy and putting out more music, more mixtapes or whatever. You know, we come in contact with Tech 9 and his company, Strange Music. And they took us out. First tour was 67 dates, like no days off. This dude is recording all day and night. Whatever you want, well, mixtapes, albums, singles, what? So our whole thing was just, you know, being repetitive, you know, constantly perfecting your craft. You know, so that's why we was all, we always able to achieve our 10,000 hours. It's that quote that Malcolm Gladwell has because, we, you know, Top gave us his studio and we was able to, to live in there, you know, weeks, months, you know, sometimes three, four months at a time just creating. You can walk in that bitch and feel Section 80 in that bitch. Well, he recorded some of 90059 there. You can feel when they dropped the Book of Soul in there. The vibe was, was correct and we, we, we really brothers. I'm a rock though, like a rock though, and my eyes low, and I drive slow like Paul Wall. Give it back though, I got y'all. We slept in that motherfucker, man. You can feel Q projects in that motherfucker. You can feel that shit. Like you can feel that that's where it happened. It's just incarcerated. <laughs> it's just incarcerated. A lot of groups be put together and shit, and motherfuckers don't like each other. Yeah. We was we was from the soil with it and, and we grown to learn each other ways and we we'll piss each other off and we we'll make fun about it. <laughs> we just work. Like, those guys are spend a night and actually sleep in the booth. I mean, they get the pillows or whatever and just go to sleep in there. Everything you need is in that studio, you know what I mean? It, it humbled us and it made us go hard. From writing these rules up on the wall to nothing ever working properly to going in the house eating up all top food from his kids, everything about it is it says home, it says family. Keeping it cheap ain't nothing. Hey. You ain't gotta like it cause the hood don't love it. Hey. You ain't gotta like it cause the hood don't love it. Hey. Watch a young nigga show us ass I'm puppy. Hey. Hey. I got the whole block up. Hey. You ain't gotta like it cause the hood don't love it. Hey. You ain't gotta like it cause the hood don't love it. Hey. Watch a young nigga show us ass I'm puppy. Hey. Nah, 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 you know what this is. Worst days of my life, man. I, I never forget it. Oh man, basically Nixon going projects. That's out there in the West Coast, you know. It's the biggest projects west side of Mississippi. That's my neighborhood. That's where I was born and raised, you know. Okay. He lived right there. His mama stayed down there. Look, I told you, he told y'all he'd be in the projects. Oh, yeah. We finna talk about this wall right here, man. If you can take a look at it, man. It runs from all the way to the end, all the way down, man. All my dead homies, like, like it's, it's, it's too many to name on the wall, man. This wall right here is history right here, man. This wall right here means a lot to me, dog. you know what I'm saying? Because it represents all the people that, that, that represents the projects, you know what I'm saying, that was born and raised out these right here, man, you know what I'm saying? So it means a lot to me, man. So like when people pass, a lot of people tend to forget about, you know what I'm saying, a lot of loved ones, but right here we'll never forget about them because they right here on the wall with us forever, man.